It's been well documented that for the last sort of 10 years, Coventry City have been a club in turmoil. Uh, everything seemed to go wrong, wrong for us. We were bought by a hedge fund who then assets stripped. We were at risk of losing our training ground. We lost our home stadium twice. We had to move to Northampton and then to Birmingham. We got relegated from the championship. We got relegated from League One. We were at rock bottom as a club and things showed no sign of going anywhere. And then something happened. And something that has changed the way that this club is going and the trajectory of our club. It's not completely down to this, but it's played a big part. It's sort of breathed new life into the club. Of course, I'm talking about Mark Robbins. Since he re-signed for the club after a tumultuous first stint when he left us for Huddersfield only a few days after saying that Coventry City was in his blood, he's really turned the club's fortunes around and you can pinpoint a number of particular moments in games where things looked like they were going really badly and then all of a sudden they managed to turn around. And it's not entirely thanks to him. Of course, the players have had to play a massive part that he and Eddie Varvo scouted. But I think the key thing it's been the relationship between Robbins and Vivash. Because Vivash, obviously, in the past, has worked for the Chelsea Youth Academy. He's got strong links. And I think he's a lot of the brains behind a lot of the good work that we do. And Robbins, obviously, takes his advice very seriously. He's the assistant manager. He trusts him really well. And he's not led him astray yet. So for sort of the last 15 or 16 seasons, you're talking about just pure pain if you're a Cov fan. And that all seemed to turn around, strangely... Then we got relegated. If we're being picky, it was about a month or two months before we got relegated mathematically because we won the Checker Trade Trophy, which is a tiny, tiny cup. But it meant so much to us as a club because it was 30 years since we won the FA Cup at that same stadium. And it just felt like the start of something new. And it really, really, really was. It really proved that way. Mark Robbins was with us when we got relegated. And even then, he looked like he could even escape from that... Um, that position for a few weeks well it was never realistic we had such a big job to do but I'm almost glad that we did get relegated because it forced a hard reset we came down there was really mixed feelings about the way our season was going to go from a lot of fans that I spoke to a lot of fans expected us to either win the league or get relegated so the attitude towards the club was really poor and this was the time when we were signing one or two year contract extensions to play at the then Rico Arena that wasn't great because that left a huge pit of uncertainty around the club. But it's also been reported this week that those issues are over. So a brief timeline. About 10 so years ago, the owners of the club decided that the rent they were paying was disproportionate to what they were receiving from uh, playing at the, the stadium. So they argued they needed to pay less rent. This divulged over not a very long period of time into us moving away from the arena and going to play home games in Northampton. A roughly 70 mile trip, depending on where you live in the city, to play your home games. Obviously, this seriously divided the fan base. You had people, and I believe both sides have an argument here, who decided that they had to go and support the club because it's their club and they couldn't bear to see it die. And you had people that were so disillusioned by the way the club was being run that they just couldn't bring themselves to go. I was one of those people in that second group. So, scratch that. We come home. 2014, we played Gillingham in our first game back at the Rico, as it then was. And we win 1-0. We thought, maybe it's over. Maybe they've decided that it's not a big issue anymore. And then the stadium gets sold to wasps. And then everything kicks off again. So for the last five or six years, there's been court cases against the council and the owners of that stadium. And we have been at the brunt of that big time as a fan base because it's left us not knowing where we're going to play or even if the club's going to exist. Because under the Football League rules, if you can't have a stadium to play in, you can't be a member of the league. Birmingham stepped in and offered very kindly to rent their grounds for a million pounds a season or there or thereabouts, which I say slightly mockingly but if they didn't we wouldn't be a club anymore and it is as simple as that so we played there for about two years come back to the Rico sign a 10 year deal it gets renamed the Comfortable Society Arena which I find very funny because on everyone's season ticket cards it still says the Rico return membership which I find rather amusing um, so that's a thing and then it was announced that the club had entered talks with Warwick University which was a step that 
had been long overdue because the club's owners have been promising for a long time that they were going to look at building a new stadium, but there was never really any concrete evidence of this. And so having a big organisation, a big well-respected, nationally known, even internationally known organisation such as Warwick Uni, on our doorsteps was a big thing for us. And it has been announced that in the last few days, the European Court for Arbitration of Sport, I said that wrong, the European Court of Arbitration for Sport, which is the top level that a, a private company can take a complaint against anyone to in regards to sporting matters, as CSU had done against uh, WASP and Comptry Council, it had been thrown out. But even despite that, there's also rumblings with the fact that the owners of the club didn't want to pursue it anyway. When you couple that with the way the club's been performing on the field as well in the last few seasons, we really seem to have turned it around. And not a lot of people thought this was going to happen. It might be too early to say that CSU has really turned a corner. We have to wait for the results of the Central Stadium opportunity at Warwick before that become become a major talking point. But I feel like they're definitely on the right track and we are not far away. And it leaves me with one question. Coventry City, a club in turmoil? Maybe not anymore. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this has been an interesting video for people that may not know all the details of the situation or heard this news. Um, but it was a big sigh of relief to me personally. So I thought I just had to briefly cover it, even though I've not spoken about football before. Thank you very much and I will see you next time.